We were founded in 1960 by eminent intellectuals like Bertrand Russell, Einstein, uh, Robert Oppenheimer, who was the father of the Manhattan Project. Uh, not as a traditional academy organized on disciplinary lines, focusing on specialized knowledge, but on a group of concerned intellectuals who were very concerned about how science and knowledge are being used in the world and what are the social implications and policy implications of that. So the Academy's focus is on global challenges and what knowledge we need and what responsibility we have to take for the proper implementation of that knowledge, all of which is directly related to this uh, project. We're a member of ECOSOC. We have an ECOSOC uh, special consultative status. We are we're linked with the UNESCO. But our, this project has its roots back in, 19, in 2013 when we partnered with the UN here in Geneva for a conference on global challenges and opportunities in the 21st century. And we had about 200 diplomats here looking at what those challenges were and what should be done about them. And the Academy has spent the last six years doing research and conducting further deliberations based on what we heard then. At, the, at this point, about a year ago, uh, we came to the conclusion that there was a very important topic which we had not sufficiently covered and which our own research had not sufficiently covered, uh, which was not specific to any of the the not limited to any of the problems we were talking about, political, economic, social, uh, uh, military issues, immigration issues, financial crises. We looked across the boards at them, but applied to all of them. Uh, and that's really the purpose of this project. Uh, we have many organizations, both within the UN group, at the national level, in the NGO community, and elsewhere, that are focusing on specific issues, the sources of the problems, strategies and remedies for the problems, and all. But there's something we all have in common, whatever field we're going in. And that is, how do we effectively accelerate changes in the society? How do we make it faster and more effective than it is today? We are in a world of increasing speed, unprecedented speed, complexity, uncertainty, and also a growing frustration that as a global community, we're not responding to the challenges we face effectively and certainly not rapidly enough. We've got the ecological crisis breathing down our neck uh, every day uh, to the level where the, the term that seems most appropriate today is not to talk about even a crisis, but an emergency that we have to act. Uh, and the question is, is there something more we can do? Is there something more we can learn about social change so that we can be more effective agents of social change? And when I say we, I'm including everybody, I mean the global community. We spent centuries developing this institution which we call the nation state so that there could be greater effectiveness, coordination, cohesive cohesion of efforts within a defined territory. And those nation states finally concluded, very rightly we'll agree, that that's not enough, that we need effective institutions for coordination uh, at the global level as well. And we know that uh, I think nobody is satisfied with our co collective capacity to build those institutions, empower them, coordinate them in a way that's fully adequate to uh, address our needs. That's not meant as a, a, a criticism of the institutions themselves. I'm talking about the global community. We've created them. They're very much constrained by the support they get from nation states to whom they are accountable the support they get in financial terms and in cooperation in other terms and so forth. I'm talking at the level of the global community. We've got a leadership vacuum at precisely the time uh, when we most urgently need coherent, coordinated leadership. 
Uh, we've got even a questioning, uh, a, a, a retreat from multilateralism. Uh, we've got a questioning of uh, uh, fundamental principles like democracy and a retreat from democracy, all of which at least most thought we knew where we were going and how we were going to get there, and even that's confused today. What type of leadership is effective in addressing issues where nobody specifically is in charge, but, have, but many, many agencies in many different sectors have to cooperate? to make this happen. It's no longer leadership in a sector, leadership in an organization, leadership in a, a narrow field of responsibility. We've got to look at leadership in its widest context of the interdependence between different sectors of the global society and how do we coordinate and uh, progress so that we're not going forward in some areas and backward in the others. It's not just a question of individuals. Setting goals is a form of leadership, shared, creating a shared vision, projecting values that we all share. Organizations working together are a, a power, can be a powerful form of leadership, as many of you have seen, and seen even though you're a, a relative to the, the, the scope of the world and the resources you have, you've seen how international organizations can play a catalytic role way beyond their mandate, their financial resources, uh, and all, as a catalyst for something larger themselves. Uh, values can do that, ideas can do that. Uh, even measures, indicators of progress. When we started this project, one of the requests of the Director General was, please, please be sure that we also talk about the need to replace uh, GDP as our, uh, as our measure because here's a measure that's categorically contradictory to uh, achieving many of the SDGs that we hold so, uh, so dear that we, we must do. So we know that also is a leadership role in getting an, an, the right types of measures. The right types of theories in our international group on economics, we're arguing that unless we change our theoretical conceptions, we're not going to get the changes in policies and institutions we need because the institutions are relying on the theory uh, of academia as the justification for what they're doing. Uh, and unless we challenge the theory itself. So this goes all the way back to our educational institutions, to our research institutions and all, and even to the type of thinking we do. We need to, we need to be teaching our youth in, a, in the educational system uh, to look at things in a much more global, inclusive way as complex systems, uh, as human-based systems, not mechanical uh, uh, apparatus. And how do we put the humanity back into our education and our social sciences? All of this is part of it. So we're not excluding it. But we're looking, we're trying to look at the, all the dimensions and see what we can learn from what has uh, worked in the past. And finally, how do we get, rouse the, 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 the public uh, to act in a way to actually carry out the changes in culture, the changes in behavior that we need. We have examples of all these things in the past not at the level and magnitude that we need today, but we have enough knowledge if we mine that knowledge and systematically apply it collectively. And that's the purpose of this project. So let me tell you a little bit more about the project. We conceive of it with five stages. The first is uh, consultations with the stakeholders, and that's going to take place for about a year. And uh, this is the, the purpose of this briefing was really to start those discussions. We want to find out from you who are interested and willing how we can consult with you, how we can learn from your experiences, what you have to share with us, and how we can do that over the next one year. Then a year from now, and I think the dates have already been finalized, October, at least provisionally, October 27th and 28th, which is just the week of the uh, 75th anniversary of the UN uh, on the 20th, which happens to fall on a Saturday, the 24th. Uh, so we'll have a, a large gathering here uh, 
um, in, at the UN in Geneva uh, of representatives of all these stakeholder groups and others to feed back the results of these consultations and to project them to a larger community. There'll also be a final written report, which we are inviting our stakeholder partners to contribute to, as you and many others we're in touch with. I mentioned a few uh, as we go on. And then after the conference and the report, for us it's really just the beginning, because the question is, how do we how do we reach out to educational institutions, training institutes? How do we use the media? How do we use the arts and other forms of communication to take the knowledge that comes from the project and reach out to as far as we can to the global community? So if we have media and uh, experts and many of your organizations have a lot of experience with this, we would welcome uh, knowledge of that as well. And then to see specifically as we go through, what can this project contribute to the achievement of the SDGs? SDGs is not, it's a, it's a big enough target to be, we're not exclusively on that, but if, if we can contribute to that, we would feel certainly the project's been very beneficial. So here's a list of the, uh, the stakeholder groups that we have on our list. The international organizations, that's the significance of this as the first step, this meeting. Nation states, uh, educational institutions, we're already talking to a number of international institutions about partnering with us uh, on what we can learn from what, what the universities are doing. Science and technology, we are in uh, further, uh, we're in pretty far along in discussions with IEEE which some of you may know is the largest professional organization of engineers in the world, about 400,000 members, and we've had detailed discussions with them, uh, and they're interested to be one of our consulting partners. Uh, with the business and finance community, we are, the Academy was a, a co-organizer of a conference at the UN in New York on September 12th and 13th, uh, looking at the future of finance and capital and how it has to change and how we will try to influence the direction. And we have people from the industry who really are convinced that we have to change the direction of how our financial markets and our, our management of, of finance are, are going. So we'll be looking for partners in business and the financial community. Civil society organizations, next generation youth groups, We've already started contact and we're, uh, uh, we're through the UN here and in New York looking for which are the organizations that could be most representative who are most committed to addressing uh, the global social challenges. And then to that we have, and after that, media and, and I would add also the arts and how we can uh, uh, mobilize the tremendous capacities of the uh, of the arts to, for, for outreach and communication and understanding. I'm going to end my presentation with a set of questions. And they're questions for you and your organizations. And I, we would, I would welcome questions about what I have spoken, but also welcome any experiences or insights you have from your experience, where you are now, or where you have worked before, or where your organizations are working, that you think would be rel relevant to our consultations and the project that, that we're initiating. So, our, for the consultations, our steps are, first of all, to identify partners within UN agencies and national governments who would like to partner with us, have something they would like to contribute, and then we will work with them on how do we do that in the most effective way? Uh, we are not looking for information in the traditional uh, area where we can send a 30-page questionnaire and expect to. What we are interested in is insights from experience. Uh, so if we raise questions, it's designed to encourage our partners to think about these issues and reflect on their own experience and come back to us with what what they think and what you think is relevant to the project. Uh, one of the things we'd like to know is examples from your experience of highly effective leadership 
at the global level. I mean, if you're from an international organization where you see something that's been done that has had global outreach. That doesn't mean we're not, in, we are also interested in effective leadership at the national level or at any community level that has gone beyond leadership within a norm, an institution to leadership of, a, of the society at any level. But I, I, I lead with the global level because that's really the territory we're trying to influence and many of you have been doing things on that basis. Secondly, if we look at that experience, those success stories, and many of the success stories have been told, but I'm not sure, at least for the world in general, that we've always understood the principles behind those successes, the principles that we could take and apply uh, to other contexts effectively. We do things, we succeed. It doesn't mean that we fully understand how we succeeded or why, or we can tell somebody else how to do the same thing. It requires a, a different level of awareness of conceptualization uh, that comes after the experience usually, not during it. Uh, so uh, we'd like to help, we'd like to work with you and learn to think about your successes and what we can learn from it that could be transferable to other areas. Then third, innovative leadership in initiatives your organization is currently working on. Maybe it's not something that has made the headlines in terms of measurable impact now. But we are also encourage you to reflect on the role your organizations are trying to play now in being in a, a leadership movement at a wider level. And then uh, insights based on your experience. What do you see that could be done to enhance and accelerate global progress on any of the challenges that we face today? In other words, your knowledge and experience, which is not yet fully institutionalized in the strategies that are being employed. What can we learn from that? Because let's start with what, uh, with what we know already and then think of extending that knowledge to other areas. And then fifth, what's the kind of change in thinking we need in order to unleash effective action? What type of thinking should we be giving our engineers and our scientists to understand not just the fields of expertise within which they're working, but the, the social context in which they're working and the implications and ramifications of the introduction of new technologies in any field on the wider society. That essentially was one of the rationale for the founding of the World Academy because uh, scientists in, of different types realize that our education is not preparing us to live in a global, interconnected, highly complex society. So what do we have, what do we have to learn about the way we think and change the kind of education we're giving and the kind of thinking that we're teaching? And finally, uh, what can we do to change the way we think about mobilizing social initiative. You have many successful examples in isolated fields. What can we learn from that about mobilizing social participation at the global level uh, to address all of these challenges? Uh, at some stage along the way, we'll encourage our uh, consulting partners to produce briefing papers where their ideas have solidified uh, in the context of the project, which would serve as a basis for the design of the uh, conference, of the main conference, for organizing consultations, uh, webinars, personal gatherings where we can interact with you, understand your perspectives, and learn as much as we can from them. And then after the main conference, to also give inputs to the final report. Uh, so that you, could, you would have an opportunity to contribute uh, in writing what you think is really important, so we're sure that it's taken into account at the time of the project, the final report. And after the main conference, we'd also be looking at how we can work together uh, and in what form, how we can have an alliance of those who really, uh, who really buy into this idea that yes, it's not enough we need in a field. Uh, it, it, we have to figure out a way uh, to lead uh, uh, 
a group that, that, that from that, that's all-encompassing, that doesn't have any limits or categories or divisions in it. 